So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the MAT 265 Mastery Test Review. Our agenda today is to go over the presenters, the objectives, the topics, and then include examples for each of those topics. And then here we have the Instagram on the left and the FSC Tutoring Center's Facebook on the right. And I'm your presenter today. My name is Ali Spawn. I'm a junior majoring in chemical engineering and I'm a special programs tutor here. Our objectives today do include going over the derivative definition, the power rule, trig functions, product and quotient rules, inverse trig functions, exponential and logarithmic functions, and then examples of each of those rules. So for the derivative definition, we have f prime of a equals limit of x approaching a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. And then for the power rule, we have x raised to n equals n times x raised to n minus 1. So for our power rule examples, we have these three, and I'm going to give you some time to write them down and then try to go through them, and then I'll include the, exam the answers to each of them. So for the first time, we have that it equal we have y equals x raised to 2.5 minus 1 over x raised to 5.5. So then the derivative of that equals 2.5 x raised to 1.5 plus 5.5 divided by x raised to 6.5. And then for the second one, we have y equals 3x plus 8 over x plus 410 over x squared. So the derivative of that equals 3 minus 8 over x squared minus 820 divided by x raised to the third power. So the next one's a little bit trickier. We have the third root of x raised to the eighth power plus two times the square root of x raised to the fourth power. So then that simplifies to x raised to eight divided by three plus two x raised to four divided by two. So that ends up equaling y, the derivative of that ends up equaling eight thirds times x raised to the 5 thirds plus 4x. So for our trig functions, we have the sine, cosine, and tangent, which are the common ones you'll see most likely. So for the derivative of sine of x equals cosine of x, and the derivative of cosine x equals negative sine x, and the derivative of tangent x equals secant squared x. Just make sure to make a note of cosine equaling negative sine x because with the sine change, sometimes it's an easy place to make an error. So then we have the trig functions for secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So the derivative of secant x equals secant x times tangent x. The derivative of, co of cosecant x equals negative cosecant x times cotangent x. And then the derivative of cotangent x equals negative cosecant squared x. So for cosecant x and cotangent x, you have a negative sign here. So you need to make sure you also make a note of that one to make sure you don't make a sign error. So we have some examples. I'm going to let you guys write these down and then I'm going to go over the answers. For the first one, we have y equals 5 times sine of x plus 10 tangent x. So the derivative of that equals 5 times cosine of x plus 10 secant squared x. And then for the second one, we have y equals tangent x minus 8 cosecant x. So the derivative of that equals secant squared x plus 8 cosecant x times cotangent x. Then for the third one, we have 3 times cos cosine x plus 2 times cotangent x. So the derivative of that equals negative 3 sine x minus 2 cosecant squared x. So these are just looking back at the six rules I just showed you previously and just applying them. 
You just want to make sure that you have all of those memorized for the test. So for the product and quotient rules, we have that the product rule is you have like your y will be equal to an f of x times a g of x. So you're going to have the, the derivative of that will be equal f of x times the derivative of g of x plus g of x times the derivative of f of x. And then for the quotient rule, you have f of x divided by g of x. And for that one, it equals g of x times f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x, which is also a derivative. And then that's divided by gx squared. These are also two other rules you need to have memorized for your test. So I have some examples for these. I might give you some time to write them down and I'll go over what the answers are. So for the first one, we have y equals four sine of x plus five tangent of x times x squared. So for the first one, it's just four sine of x equals four cosine of x. So for the second part of that, you need to apply the product rule. So then that ends up being five x squared times secant squared x plus 10 of x times tangent of x. And then for the bottom one, that's when you're going to apply the quotient rule. So you have the square root of x minus four divided by the square root of x plus seven. So for that one, it's going to be your square root of x plus seven times one half square root of x minus the square root of x to minus four times one half divided by the square root of x. And that is all divided by the square root of x plus seven squared. And then that's the simplification of it. And for the chain rule, you're gonna have f of g of x. So for that one, your derivative is gonna be f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So we have some examples applying the chain rule, so I'm going to give you some time. As always, you can like pause the video and watch and then go through these on your own and then compare them to the answers and see where you went wrong. Or if you got them right. So. For the first one, we have y equals cosine cubed times x raised to the eighth power. So that ends up, the derivative of that ends up going three cosine squared times x raised to the eighth times eight times x raised to the seventh power. So for the second one, we have y equals 3,000 divided by sine of four x. So the derivative of that equals 12,000 times cosecant of four x times cotangent four x. And then for the bottom one, we have y equals sine of secant x. So that ends up being going one. cosine secant of x times secant x times tangent x. So then we have our inverse trig functions. We have the inverse of sine is equal to one divided by the square root of one minus x squared. And then the inverse of cosine of x is equal to negative one divided by the square root of one minus x squared. And then for the inverse of tangent x, we have one divided by one plus x squared. So you wanna make note that the cosine, the inverse of cosine is a negative. So let me have some examples applying these. So the first one is y equals arc sine of e raised to the x, and that ends up equaling for the derivative, that derivative equals e raised to the x divided by one, the square root of one minus e raised to the two x. So, and then for the y equals, the second one is y equals arc cosine x plus four. So the derivative of that equals 
negative 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus 1 plus 4 squared. So then we have the exponential in logarithmic functions. And for that, you have the derivative root of a raised to the x is equal to a raised to x times ln of a, or the natural log of a. And then for the second one, we have e raised to the x is equal to itself. So it's equal to e, x, e raised to the x. And then we have the derivative of ln of x is equal to one divided by x. I'm gonna make note that that is the absolute value of x. So for the log of a of x, that is equal to one divided by x times the natural log of a. So then we have some examples applying these. First one we have y equals x raised seventh power times e raised to three x that equals y prime equals seven x to the sixth times e raised to the three x plus three x to the seventh times e raised to the three x. The second one we have y equals the natural log of x to the fifth plus four x and then that is all raised to the sixth power. So for that one it equal the derivative equals six times five x raised to the fourth plus four divided by x raised to the fifth plus four x. For the last one, we have 75 times x raised to the eighth plus three times e raised to nine x plus two times e raised to, to two. So we're gonna take the derivative of that and it's gonna equal 600 times x to the seventh plus 27 e raised to the nine x. So that is the end of the presentation. So whenever you're going through the examples, just feel free to pause and look through them and practice them on your own and make sure that you're able to do them to prepare yourself for the exam coming. Thank you.